Guess who's back, everybody? Well, obviously you can see, but look! Hello. This is a special one-off thing. Ooh, oh, <laughs> Don't break it. There will be several specials of this in the future. That's this not this isn't all. working, dude. Put it on the breasts of the car. I tried. That doesn't look flattering to anyone. Well, we're upside down. How can you tell? Because it's not upside down in the display. It's me, by the way. Yeah, it looks perfectly fine in the thing. Yeah, the screen, which is over here, is upside down because it's broken. And this camera model is for America, so I can't get it repaired over here. I would have to send it to America. So... So the moral is I need to get a new HD camera. Say hello, whoever's in the back. Hello! Sarah! Hello! And? It's me, but then you can see my face. Why oh yes, you, you can. Okay. I, I, it's That's why I sat here. That's why we switched. It's upside down. I, I thought it was Sarah. That's me waving It's upside right down. I was the star of the show tonight. Sarah! <laughs> oh! You know what it reminded me of? The Sarah count on um, Spoonie's Final Fantasy XIII. Sarah! Sarah! Bing. Okay. So. We saw the forest because the rest of the world got either gods well, we of Egypt. We couldn't see it for the trees. Ah! <laughs> The rest of the world got either Gods of Egypt, which looks amazingly terrible, or The Witch, which apparently is very good. We got That's The Forest, and I, I I, don't know if it's out in America, if it's uh, been out or what, but we got that. As somebody who's from Northern Ireland who's seen a lot of forests, I can say it was a forest. Yeah, I was just thinking I could totally go into the forest near me, the woods, and kill myself and maybe start a tourist thing. You know, people come to the local one to kill each other, kill themselves. It'd be great. You know, that's probably the worst reason you've ever come up with to kill yourself. Yeah. There's a sign in the in the that used to say me. danger quarry face, but it's been defaced to say danger queer face. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's Brilliant. funny every time I see it. Uh, so, um... Cash and homophobia in Northern Ireland. This yeah. was actually better than most of the horror movies we, we've seen. And it had some really cool, like, narrative things going on that I liked. But I really want to know, how come recently in all these horror movies that we see, both found footage and not, it features an unsympathetic, unlikable female protagonist. Now, I'm accepting the Babadook because obviously you were not supposed to sympathize with her. Oh my god. Oh, I thought you were belching at me there for a second. <laughs> she started to do that in the thing in the, in the theater bender. Bar but you're, you're, I'm making a really good point. But you're not supposed to sympathize with her. But like this girl, I didn't like her. Like I didn't like the girl from Pyramid. Like I didn't like the girl from As Above, So Below. She had really big eyes. She looked a bit like Melissa Joan Hart. Ah. A wee bit. She's like, my eyes are giant. Yeah. That is enough. That is all. And my mouth is very small. <laughs> this one, um, I got the feeling that possibly I was not supposed to laugh out loud at various points. But I did. The jump scares were... were the horror part of it was really hokey and stupid. But and the psychological thriller part was really good. <laughs> The film, I'm torn about it, to be honest. On one hand, I kind of feel really pissed off. There is legitimately this forest in Japan, and there have been legitimately a rake of suicides there. And it's... Not to be a weeb, but as part of Japanese culture, they don't like to be an obstacle or... What do you call it? A burden on anyone. So I get the feeling that a large part of the people going out to this forest to kill themselves is not to be a burden. And there are signs up everywhere about, oh, you're not a burden to your family and all that, and the forest's like trying to discourage people from doing so. But uh, I kind of feel making a movie that's like, oh, it's just the evil ghosts that make you do it. It's the forest of sadness. Our text, no! Yeah, I want to I preface this with the fact that, so we went to the pub for dinner before we went to come to see this. And we were walking down and saw a fire truck go by. And then they joined us and they were like, oh, did you see the search and rescue by the bridge? And we're just like, no, we, we saw the fire truck go by. And so what it sounds like is that someone jumped off the peace bridge, which is common a common enough method of suicide here in the city because there's three bridges that there's the phrase going to the foil. And so, like, that had happened, like, the night, you know, like, literally an hour or two before we saw this movie. And, like, knowing, you know, they were like, oh, well, back in the day, and, and people used to take, you know, if there wasn't enough food, they would take disabled people and children and old people to the forest and leave them to die, which never happened in real life. No, there's there's a history, in, especially in Japan, of people who feel that they're disabled yeah. and old, and if the family's starving, that, that maybe the thing there would be 
they would think that's the right thing to do. But there's not a history in that forest of families driving out the, the infirmary and going, we can't afford to feed you. Fuck off and die. Aye. So there was that. On the other hand, the reason I'm torn is I do feel that if it's as a metaphor for depression and stuff like that, spoilers by the way, but the protagonist that we're following, basically if you strip away everything and consider all hallucinations, she has a psychological breakdown, uh, she starts saying things. She's an unreliable narrator. Uh, it's entirely unreliable, but the whole idea is that at the end she kills herself uh, because she thinks that she's uh, hacking at the hand of the ghost of her dead father who's trying to trap her. And I really do like the whole idea of the whole sort of metaphor of depression uh, being your mind trying to trick itself into thinking bad things and doing bad things. I think that's a very solid metaphor. I know it doesn't cover all things. There's a psychologist here who's going to make a fool of me for saying yeah. it. but uh, No, that's actually a really good interpretation because I know that there are people doing research the, into the idea that um, hallucinations that... In Stop that! Would you be respectful? That people who have hallucinations that encourage self-harm, it's actually an adaptive behavior of the brain. It's this kind of idea that self-harm ideation coming from the brain is not something that can be fought internally. So the brain would create, like a, create an outside source. Like, oh, it's not me thinking I should harm myself. It's the voices telling me I should harm myself. So that is something that a front could be put up for and it could be resisted. I mean, it's just a theory, but... Yes. I'll wake up, stop being I, dead. I think it's an interesting metaphor, but at the same time, I think it's really disrespectful to, to sort of promote it as much as they did and say that, oh, the only reason people kill themselves in this forest renowned for suicide is because of the bad ghosts. Yeah. But <clears throat> at the same time, that's not why they went there. They went there, you know, obviously because they were depressed or they wanted to get away and kind of find their mind, so... They went to the forest for a reason. So it was when they were at the forest, all this stuff was happening. So at the end of the day, they, were, they still did have the drive to go. Yeah, if you're doing metaphor for depression leading to suicide in like you know an arty sort of ghosty type way, then having someone who doesn't have a history of depression going to the place to rescue their friend, the person who does, and then having a breakdown immediately because of the ghost, it kind of makes the yeah. whole yeah. metaphor yeah. very muddled. Which is which is why I'm I'm sort of in two minds about it because I really like that metaphor that they seem to be presenting. But I really hate how they presented it. I... Well, see, I thought they were going for something deeper. Like, I'll, I'll give you a rough breakdown of the plot. You you follow this one twin um, who has left her husband um, back home in America and come to Japan where her sister is a... Um, she teaches English at a school. And, you know, the police have contacted her because they said, your sister's been reported missing by the school. They went on a field trip to this forest, which is known for suicide. She went in and she didn't come out. We're pretty sure that's what happened. And so she's like, well, I'll go to Japan. And she visits the school. And then she, you know, finds a brochure for the forest. So she goes to the forest and, you know, meets this American guy there. He's like, oh, I know one of the guides, you know, you can go in and have a look around and stuff like that. And the, and the thing is that the ho the ho straight horror parts of this were kind of crap. Crap. Janky. The effects were bad. The they had jump, some grave jump, encounters level effects. The jump scares made very little sense. Blah! But as a psychological thriller, that's what really captivated me because I started seeing holes in her story and I was ready for this whole complete reveal that like something like she was the other twin, you know, she was her sister, you know, and all this kind of stuff and they kind of twist out at the end. Yeah, there's so much they could have done with it. Yeah. Like, we never get an explanation. There's no closure on the whole yeah. arc with the guy that she goes with uh what was it aiden, aiden yeah. um like aiden's presented at the start as this reporter he's really interested in the story because well he's a journalist and her story is like oh i'm looking for my sister who has got lost in the suicide forest blah blah blah, blah. and he's like yeah this is a really interesting story tell you what i'll hook you up with my guide friend we'll go in as long as i can publish your story but it like kind of shows all things he gets like a big sting in the music and looks villainous and she, the he looks like a cross between Benicio del Toro and Gerald Butler. If you can, if you can, if you can imagine that, or just Google stills <clears> from the movie, and you'll see what we mean. But like, the whole movie making part of it is leading us to believe that, yeah, he's the villain, and it's kind of like portrayed that he's locked the twin in the cellar and stuff like this. And she actually does find pictures of her sister. Yeah, on you phone. half expect the movie to go all Megan is missing. Yeah, on but us. here's here's the thing though, she looks at the picture. 
And he's like, what? Wait, show me. And, and she's like, no, I think she hallucinated the picture on, on his phone. Probably. But there was no closure for that. She eventually yeah. stabs him. and He does. But even right up to the point where she stabbed him, the, like, the whole cinematography was telling us this, this man is the villain. The and then, then a little bit later on, you suddenly see the twins alive again in another part of the forest. And I got the feeling they got to that part in the script and they decided, you know, let's have her be alive again. Let's make that the ending. Because it's a little disjointed with what the rest of it was doing. Yeah, like, I feel like there was another story that was going on because there was a lot of things that kept being dropped. Like, one of the lines that made me laugh, and it made sense at, at the end of the film, was she's at the um, at the, the visitor center for the forest, and she's like, I'm looking for this woman, you know. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we found your sister. He's like, what? You're like, yeah, come come follow me. And so she, you know, opens this door and then goes down these stairs as Japanese ladies, lady does. And then the main character looks down and she goes... What is this? Basement. And she's like, Basement. <laughs> and I just can't help but laugh. And like, but the thing is, then then she has this. There's this nightmare where she goes downstairs into the basement of her family, of her grandmother's house, and she and her sister are playing in the tent. But then her sister goes Bleh! and jump scare. And then you know, like, there's the door, and she goes, "Oh, why would they lock it?" And he goes. Um, I guess I didn't want anyone going down the basement. She's like, well, how do you know it's a basement? He's like, or a closet. I don't know what the... But it was always about the stairs and the basement. And she tells the story about how her parents died in a car crash. And you see the flashback and we're like, wait a second. Like either, what we're seeing is so inconsistent with what she's saying. Either that or it's a terribly, uh, terrible continuity. Yeah, <laughs> yeah my, my, my thought was until they got to the noise. It was like... Uh, the sound that you hear is clearly a gunshot. Like the, and then yeah. you hear the cocking of a shotgun and then another gunshot. And I was like, that doesn't sound like a thing. And then they go down, the, the grandmother goes down the, uh, the stairs and, and I'm like, like... Wait, they're watching TV upstairs? Is that normal? Well, you know what I was what I was thinking was, is um, uh, I, know, I know a girl who lives in an upstairs apartment mm -hmm. where like you have to go down one of those like, like little very thin set of stairs into the, to the front door. So I'm like, oh, it must be a duplex. But then it's like, obviously, it's just like, oh, I didn't see them because I closed my eyes, but my sister, she saw it all, their bodies on the lawn. We're like, that's not a lawn, that's a basement. Yeah. So, hey, no, no, honey, basement. The basement. Basement. <laughs> but, yeah, and so... The, the, the fridge they were keeping the dead bodies in wasn't a fridge. It wasn't cold enough. There was, there was dripping water inside it. It was a dripping water sound effect. I don't think it was supposed to be a fridge. I think the, the line was that, oh, we keep them down here so it's colder, as in it's cold in the basement. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta keep it but, cold enough to the Which actually is rot. not the way the coroner would come and take the body away because I read like this whole article on this forest. Because yeah. I found it linked a few years ago in a cracked article. Japan, Japan is a fully developed nation. They yeah. have an active coroner service. Yeah, they were they were portraying things as though the ja Japan was a 1950s third world racist caricature of, uh, of probably a country in <laughs> South Asia. Every yeah. teenager we see in this movie is wearing this friggin' anime school uniform. Yeah. And while I recognize that these are still the done school uniforms in most of Japanese schools, it, it kind of feels like this movie was written by some sort of weeaboo. Mm. Like, Possibly, all yeah. of my ch All of my characters must either be wearing kimonos or school uniforms. <laughs> and even, like, even the forest guide. Now, I, w I do want to, to, to stress that, like, I really encourage you to, to Google articles about this place and read about it if you're curious, because... You know, I found a thing, like a 25-minute documentary somewhere on, I think it was on YouTube or something, by, you know, this local guy who does go around in his spare time and, you know, note down where our suicides have taken place so the park rangers can come and collect the bodies. And there are people who go out and do that. I wonder about like the, the logic of dis of cutting him down. The, the, you're marking the location, that's good. But if you mark it, if you cut him down and then you mark the location, it might take them a like day or several days to get them there. So someone theoretically could move the the, the body. It could make uh, maybe the tree falls over it, like because of a thunderstorm or like a lightning blasting, and it falls over and gets it gets lost again. Yeah, but moved. he might. I, I don't think he said I must cut him down as though I am required to. I took it as more of like he chose to. As, I must cut yeah. him down. And, you know, it's like he chose to, but it, it strikes me as. It makes it makes it the possibility that the body could be in a different place when they come to get him. No, it's 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 very it's it's unlikely but possible. But like I took that as, I mean, whenever you hear like whenever you're ha hearing English spoken by someone from a, speaking English as a second language, there are nuances that probably translate better into their language. So him saying, "I must cut him down," might not be legally I am required to do so. It is procedure to do so. Or it could have been more like, I feel that I must do so. Respect is not as good as logic. <laughs> we were just talking about your logic like two yeah. minutes ago. Oh, I'm sorry. F f while you were inside. Oh. 
Not in a bad context. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, about how you're logical about horror movies. And other people Whereas like, oh. I'm, I'm more emotionally involved. And, oh, and I laugh at the terrible things. Yeah. And I told the story about 127 hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our first date. Date. I laughed my head off at James Franco being in lots of pain and hundreds of Because it was hours. a real person that had to cut their real arm off. And how would you feel... <laughs> He should watch the show and like find out that you said well, this. He and he'd be like, I didn't cut off my damn arm for you to laugh at yeah, me. I'm not laughing at him. I'm laughing at James Cr- Franco's version of him. That's he was pretty a armless. Oh, ah! we're sorry, James Franco's armless. depiction of him was as an asshole. I have no idea about the real guy. I've never seen him. He's never read, read the book. book. I don't want to read the book. The, it, based oh. on the film, the guy acted like an asshole and he deserved it. Oh. Just the, no fi- the fictional the- character. Okay. Not... The real man. I have no idea. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. I'm not commenting on him. I was reading a. I was reading a random bit of fiction online a while ago, and it was about this alien race that came to Earth, and they were horrified by the fact that humans could do anything to survive. Why did They're... the autofocus just go off? Oh, it hates me. Hello. We're a blur. But like, it was all about this alien race, and they were horrified about human survival. Being like, we looked into their history, and they used to hunt just by walking after their prey until it died of exhaustion. And we looked into their documentaries; they were willing to self mutilate to get out of situations. How does one perform surgery on oneself? And it was quite interesting. It was like a thing. It's like they kill each other and fry yeah, it the doesn't flesh. like the fact that there's the light sort of thing and. I don't know why it suddenly went off. That was it's just before. like, you know, that was kind of artistic of it. Hmm. I think oh, maybe this is fogging up. Let me clear it. But yeah, like, I mean, it was... So, I think we should all invest in phones like Sarah. Because apparently, it, uh, uh, this battery can last for I was thinking two, that. two and a half days, maybe. Yeah. And you know what? So she maybe gets, three. She gets like right off... Well, that's fine. You can, we'll fix it in post. No, we she, can't. You'll add funny effects like Instagram filters or something. But anyway, so she gets off the plane, literally gets off the plane in Tokyo Airport, takes out her, her phone, it's a Samsung, and calls her sister. I thought it was an iPhone 6. But it made the ch noise that, like, and then she had the adaptive light that. But it had an apple on the back of it. Oh, I didn't see that. I thought, <laughs> okay, well, never mind. But anyway, she took out her phone and immediately called her sister. I don't know about you. I don't know how much money she had that she could buy like international plans. But like, you don't just get off the plane in a new country and use your phone. That costs you so much fucking money. Although I am covered for all of the EU under my standard rates. That's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I it tells me I'm roaming when I go to Prahen because yeah. there's there's a mast from the Republic that hits and it's like welcome to Vodafone.ie and I'm like I'm not in the Republic, fools. Even though where I live is closer to the Republic than the waters. You used to have to meet on the top of our guided street. Mm. But yeah. I'm going to stick my face here. No, that didn't help. So, I don't know. I mean, I, it was better than most of the horror movies that we see. I mean, I like the, I like the, um, in the beginning how the... Now I feel like we're in some kind of weird, like, performance art piece. <laughs> In the beginning, how like the they, they gave you the backstory on the, on the sisters and everything like that was that that exposition was woven in pretty well. It was better than As Above, So Below and the Pyramid, Aye. and the Quiet Ones was, and the Possession. It was better than most of the shit you make me watch. To be honest, uh, out of the you know because <clears throat> whenever the traditional old ribbon and Hagen sort of vexy critique thing was either a horror movie or a superhero movie, nine times out of ten. Yep. And this is on the upper end of the horror movie ones we've watched for these. Still not brilliant. I mean, it's no classic. It's There's too many jump scares in it for it to be a good Oh, one. yeah, the jump scares yeah, were shit. They had really nothing to do with the actual crux of it. One of them was an old lady yeah. who happened to be in the same hotel she slept in. For I don't know. We didn't see her book in, check in, check out of the first hotel in Tokyo City. We didn't see her check in, check out of this random hotel that appeared that out of appeared. fucking nowhere. And it like, totally did. Yeah, she was just like walking, walking, walking. Oh, and then she's looking for the hotel, looks around. Oh, there it is, right beside me. See, that's another thing that went into this idea that this is all happening in her, you know, delusion. Mind. The little old lady, she's just standing in the corridor and then she's like, it's suddenly in her face and then suddenly there's a care with her. It's and then later she sees like 12 little ladies standing around a campfire and they're like, whoa. It's like, <laughs> yeah, the jump scares had literally nothing to do with the actual thing of it. It's a little old lady I saw before. Oh no! 
I also am afraid of the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> this is such an American style horror film. Cause yeah, I wonder. If, I wonder if we'll find out that this is an adaptation of like a movie made in Japan, like in the eighties. It actually made sense. I think a, a Japanese version of taking the basic concept would be far more interesting. Yeah. American horror movies. Well, Japanese people playing Japanese characters in a Japanese film. No, yeah. no, no. Kind of like that. Kind of like the. You know? Did you ever see Perfect Blue? The anime, yes, yeah. kind of like that. Like you don't know if you should actually believe. You mean the Black Swan? <laughs> no, you don't know if you should actually believe the perception of the main character. Is what I'm saying. Well, oh. I mean, the um, American horror is all um, is usually has a big history of being rural or semi-rural. More recently, suburban stuff, especially with slasher movies or um, urban, more urban stuff, but they're usually about serial killers then. Like British in uh, in uh, comparison, British horror is, is almost always urban. And involves the lift. Well, sometimes, but it's buildings. It's it's, it's cities usually. The, cities are the spawn of Satan ripping our countryside apart. Yeah, there's all sorts of psychological things you could write about these sorts of things. But Japanese ones, based on the ones that films I've seen, Japanese horror tends to be based on ideas which are old and traditional, sort of like uh, folklore, old stuff, nothing new. While British ones are, it the. I don't know anything about other countries' horrors, but that seems to be the gist I'm getting. So, a Japanese version of the basic idea would be far more interesting because it wouldn't just be a bunch of oh look, random sadness ghosts in a in the forest. Doo, 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 doo. I was upset that we didn't get the little teeny forest spirits from Princess Mononoke. You know, little head. Oh, goth right? versions. Listening to listening to um, uh, Lincoln Park would be great. We need we needed we needed 100 percent more goth god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know that someone's probably going to take bits of Princess Mononoke now and set it to that and then tweet yeah. it. like, Hogan, look what I've done. And you'll be like, good job. Creature, get on it. <laughs> oh, dear. The, uh, I'll give you three crunchies if you do it, creature. <laughs> crunchies are nasty. I don't like their texture. The... It's not very good. At the end, the woman he suddenly revealed that, oh, you know, spoilers. Oh, she killed herself because she slit her wrist trying to cut off the ghost's yeah, hand. and she went across the tracks. For fuck's sake, filmmakers, that doesn't fucking kill you. And early, go up the line. Earlier on, she was going to go up the line, but then... Because she thought they were magnets. Yeah, and this one, she just went across and she, she died. And then she was a ghost running around. And then this little schoolgirl ghost is like, I've got you, with a big smile of evilness. And then she gets You're dragged into there. the earth. And it's like... Why is she being dragged down and to at hell? The end, like the, well, why? But I thought all the other ghosts were sadness ghosts. Why isn't? Why isn't she being all like sort of like the end of Carnival of Souls, being all? Welcome. Oh well, I gotta join the other sadness ghosts and wander around forever. Welcome to the ghost pack. We love you. Hello, yeah. friend, ghost family. Because the in Carnival of Souls is a very low budget film made in the sixties, which stylistically inspired Night of the Living Dead. And it's about this woman who gets she's in a car crash, and then she spends ninety minutes sort of wandering around. In a daze after the car crash, being followed by ghosts. Horrified by them, terrified by them. At the end, she realizes she's dead, she's a ghost, and she joins them. Bruce Willis was diehard all along. Oh, no! But she's, she should have, you know, just sort of resigned and jo resigned herself to her fate and joined the other ghosts. Because she's a sadness ghost, and then she gets dragged down to hell, and then suddenly she's in the thing, and then she jumps out on the Japanese guy. Yeah, the last shot is the uh, Japanese guy who took them out in the forest in the first place, and he's like, no, we must go home. Home time. It's night time. No, stay night in the forest. No, and they're like, well, we're going to stay the night in the forest. Thank you very much. If I was someone, <laughs> I would have been like, actually, foreigners who are here on a visa. No, it is illegal for you to do so. But no, uh, he. There's like the whole search and rescue. The the woman's husband showed up and like they're walking through. They find the twin and she's like, mysterious twin bears tell me she's dead. My mysterious twin. And then powers. I'm thinking to myself, wow. Now the husband is going to resent the shit out of his sister-in-law forever. But no, the last shot is like, uh, the woman who's, de who's dead is just like standing there, just out of the sight of the Japanese guy who goes around and checks him for bodies. And then he's like, hmm? And then she's like, Wah! And then that's the end on a jump scare. Uh, it was really nice that Japanese ghosts respect local laws and stay in the no entry. Yeah. They stay in that end of it. It's like, Japan's, it's been going for so long and it's so oh. interested in tradition that also, ghosts have like a department. She goes, she goes to a sushi place regulations. and they serve her sashimi of a shrimp that's like still alive and that's not, is that actually a thing? Because I know that there's that thing where they like, pour they, soy sauce. Yeah, they, they pour soy sauce on a, on a wee octopus but it's not actually like still alive. It's just the nerves like go because of the saltiness. But, 
if, if anyone knows if a live, a recently live, still twitching sashimi is a thing, write the show because... I'm really hoping this doesn't happen tomorrow when we're trying to film. I think it's probably because it's of the all light. the... Yeah. This, the light, a bunch of people. We've got like three minutes of battery power left. <laughs> so so final everyone... thoughts. Ah! Final thoughts. Don't go into the forest. Final thoughts. Oh, who did you say they looked like? She looked like Melissa Joan Hart. Oh, her. Oh. I thought both of them, Sarah and Aiden, looked like um, two characters out of Grey's Anatomy, for anybody that likes Grey's Anatomy. Um, Sarah looked like Meredith, and Aiden looked like McSteamy. Go watch it, it's quite interesting. Yeah. You're on camera. She died. Oh no, sadness ghost. Wake up from the set. No. Sarah! Sarah! <laughs> Sarah! <laughs> oh, that's enough. Turn around, Sarah. Turn around, Sarah. No, turn <laughs> around, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah! The end of your life.